In certain parts of Memphis, Shelby County, like just about any city across America, there's a huge disparity in the ability to access just basic primary care, basic medical needs. And this is one of those neighborhoods that has very little. We're the only clinic in this area that our patients can come to for medical care. Uh, we see the full gamut of healthcare needs here, so certainly we do a lot of diabetes and hypertension, renal failure, kidney failure, um, we do a lot of HIV care here. That leads our patients often end up in the hospital sometimes, or having to go to the emergency room for things, um, or having to go to other specialists around the city. And so obviously we're not always in the same building as those people, and so uh, they make medication changes or they order labs and things, and it's hard often for us to know what was done. And it's hard for our patients, honestly, to be able to keep up with all that. Certainly the patient has some information, but a lot of times that's a very, they're very vulnerable at that time. They're, uh, it's a very high risk sort of environment. They're sick, they don't feel well, they leave the hospital environment, and they really don't always understand what happened. So the basic problem today is that as patients, we see a lot of different providers. It's not the case of we go to one provider for all of our care. That does happen, but the norm is more likely we have two or three, and as we get older, we can have four, five, or six providers. And those providers operate today in a vacuum. Some people believe they already have the information about them. Some people don't want them to have the information about them, that is, as a patient. But the reality is, in today's world, the primary way that data moves is a patient goes and says, I want my information taken to my provider. They get a stack this big, they take it to the provider, and the provider says, that's great and never looks at it because it's not in a format that works for them, it's not timely, it just doesn't work. So health information exchange is about getting the right information to the right place at the right time about the right person should the patient so desire that to happen. For Lee Sterling, it could have made all the difference in the world. You hear a word coming out of the physician's mouth and suddenly time stops because your head is wrapping around that single word. And when I stopped him and I said, are you telling me that he has cancer? So my husband had surgery, had the tumor removed, everything came back negative. And um, 22 months went by. And my husband came home one day and it was just interesting that that particular day when he had gone to get his blood work results, he happened to bring home a copy of the lab report. I said, well, I'm flipping the page <laughs> over and I said, where is your CEA marker? I said, I, I want to know what your CEA is looking like right now. And this is, this is the cancer marker for colon cancer. So I picked up the phone and he called his primary care physician's office, um, was speaking with a physician's assistant and he said, can you tell me what my CEA is? And her response was, we thought that the surgical oncology group was monitoring that. And sure enough, his liver was fully engaged with cancer lesions in all parts of the liver and his lower left lung. We took the scans back to the surgical oncologist to show him. He looked and he looked very startled and he said, she was doing all the blood work. And I said, yes, I understand that now. But again, she thought you were doing it. He shook his head and he said, we should have caught this. <sighs> Again, it's just, I don't know if the outcome would have changed, but it's really hard to look back at the situation and not ask yourself whether or not things could have changed if they knew. This is why providers across the U.S. are turning to health information exchanges. HIEs, as they're known, provide secure online access and routing to patients' charts among a network of providers. Hospitals, clinics, doctor's offices, and pharmacies join an exchange so they can have timely electronic access to records their patients will allow them to share. For patients, this means having their medical records available no matter where they go. And for providers, it means having instant access to life-saving information when seconds count. I've practiced medicine in a lot of different settings over the course of my life. And I think it's very hard for a member of the public to understand just how hard the job of a provider is. 
Let's take, for example, a provider in the emergency department, and you come into my emergency department and you're critically ill. I've got to solve a puzzle, and I've got to solve that puzzle quickly. Now, in the old days, what you had to do was solve that puzzle with paper. You had to hope and pray that the person could tell you enough information about their health, or you could call a relative, or call a, a practitioner's office, or call a pharmacy and get enough information to solve the problem and you never really could. You could get enough information to feel very comfortable that you probably weren't going to do much harm, but it was sure wasn't efficient. And it sure wasn't in the best interest of the individual being cared for, not having all that information. You know, when you read about errors and the other things that can also cause harm, it's because providers, well-intentioned as they are, don't have the information they need. So health information exchange has changed this dramatically. Because with health information exchange now, when I see you in my emergency department, I can get pretty quick access to all the medications from your pharmacy. Sometimes I can get access to all of the medications that you take at home, the over-the-counters and the like. I can get access to those allergy lists. I can get access to those notes from your other providers. I can get access to those laboratory reports and see what happened in your other hospitalizations. What is that scar? What did that mean? Oh, it was an appendectomy back in such and such a year. All of that just put together. I just move these pieces here, 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 here. I put them together and I solve that puzzle very quickly, very efficiently. Now another way that health information exchange solves a puzzle is if you then th go back and see your primary care practitioner. Quite often what takes place in the um, exciting atmosphere in an emergency department isn't transmitted well to that provider. But with health information exchange, the minute you come out of that emergency department, you come back into my provider office in your outpatient setting, that information is right there like that. And so you take the piece here, take the piece here, take the piece here, take the piece here, boom, you solve the problem again and you go on. That's really important for primary care. As you know, primary care providers are under a lot of pressure these days. They have to see a lot of patients. They would much rather spend their time talking to you about what's important to your health, what's important to your life, than trying to go around and get an information here, get a fax there, fill out a form here, get a request there, and put the puzzle together. They would much rather talk about you and make from that puzzle a greater thing about your better health. Experts tell us that about $660 billion a year, almost a quarter of what we spend on health care, is unnecessary spending. Doesn't do anything to improve quality. And a lot of that unnecessary spending is in duplicate testing that people don't need. Some of the most common things we see here in the emergency room are headaches and the routine when people come to the ER with a headache is to get a CT scan. We've had some patients who've had as many as 20 or 30 head CTs over a two-year period. That's enough to give you brain cancer, even if you didn't start with it. Providers right now are used to working in the current system. There's a lot of change management that has to happen. They have to be introduced just like anything else to see how this works, how it fits into their workflow, and how it will make things better for themselves and their patients. So it's not just a the situation of you turn it on and it all is well. There's an adoption curve for them. Oh, there are definitely growing pains. With any change, there's a growing pain. I mean, I don't like changing my versions of the spreadsheets and word processors I use, but I do it for the benefits. And when the benefits outweigh the pain of the change, it always happens. In the last five years, hospitals using Memphis, Tennessee's Health Information Exchange have saved $10 million from fewer admissions and fewer tests. But the number of lives saved and mistakes avoided is immeasurable. Every day we are absolutely accessing the health exchange looking for um, the, the data that the patient can't fill in. We have lots of patients that their education level is very low, they have very little understanding of their health care, and so when they were told in the hospital that they had heart failure, that never translated to anything to them, so they go and look in their health exchange and see that they had heart failure, bad heart failure, and they were in the ICU and things like that, and, um, and we can assimilate data a lot. So that, that happens quite frequently, um, that we can catch things that wouldn't have otherwise been caught. I've been in healthcare for almost 25 years now and have spent the entire career trying to improve the quality of care or improve efficiencies of systems. And this is the first time where I actually can begin to look at measurable outcomes. 
where I can see and hear a story from a provider who can tell me how he's made a difference in a patient's life. So I mean, it's all sort of coming together. And people in healthcare have been fighting this and fighting this in some ways. We've been our own worst enemy. But I think now we're at the cliff and we're about to jump over and I think it's exciting. It's gonna happen. It's just gonna take time. And when we find a win, we have to promote the win. And when I can find a provider who's had a good experience, it shouldn't be Vicki Estrin telling the story any longer. It needs to be that provider who tells the story. And that story needs to be told, and it needs to multiply, and it needs to grow. There's a whole lot of storytelling that needs to start. And I think we're starting to reach a point where we can start telling the stories.